Good morning. It's uh, Monday. Glad to have you with us. A lot of folks are uh, enjoying the day off and uh, getting a long weekend. So if you're out uh, getting ready to go sled riding with your kids or um, are you going to build a snowman? How many of us have to listen to that song today? Uh, do you want to build a snowman? Um, or you're, uh, <laughs> you're getting some projects done around your house? Um, or just relaxing. Maybe you're uh, watching some movies, catching up on some reading, um, or you may be uh, someone who has to go to work today, and uh, that's all right too. Uh, just hope you're having a good day. However you're joining us, um, whatever brings you uh, to us today, I uh, pray that you're having a great morning and uh, you're able to um, experience God's presence and enjoy um, in some way today. So uh, I want to talk about I want to talk about pain today. Um, not a subject we like to talk about for sure. As a matter of fact, it's uh, it's a subject we do everything we can to avoid. Uh, let's be honest. Um, if we can avoid pain at, at any cost, we um, we do our best. Uh, for some of us, that's why we don't go to the gym. Uh, for others of us, it's why we avoid um, certain relationships or bringing up certain uh, certain you know emotional emotional things. Um, us guys are probably uh, more guilty of that than than ladies. You you have a tendency, and I don't want to generalize by any. Um, by any uh, stretch of the imagination, but you all tend to uh, be better at that um, overall than us guys. We, we like to just don't want to talk about it, don't want to think about it. Let's just turn the page and move on. <clears throat> and so this idea of pain um, is a real tough subject for us a lot of times because the truth is until we're in the middle of it or until we're confronted with it, we um, we try not to think about it. We don't want to think about what would happen if we got a, a, a life-threatening disease. We don't want to think about what it would be like if our spouse um, got sick or left us or, um, you know, there was some kind of tragic um, event, you know, for our spouse. We, we just, we do everything we can to, to try and avoid. And then, here's the deal. When we're in it, when we do get that diagnosis, when we, you know, do get the Dear John letter, when when our girlfriend breaks up with us, when, you know, when we don't have the money to go back to college, when, you know, whenever it is, we, we wonder why everyone kind of leaves us and we feel alone when we're going through it. And complete opposite, like, you know, where are my friends? Where is everybody? And and it's because they're trying to avoid it as well. Let's be honest. We, we try to mitigate and avoid pain as much as possible. But what do we do when we're there? And the question I want to ask you today is, does God care? And it's easy, it's easy for us when we're not in difficult situations to go, yes. Yeah, God cares. I mean, God you know, but we're in it, we have a tendency or, or we kind of default to being like a two or three year old. Let's be honest. We throw a temper tantrum and God, you know, it feels like you don't care about me and you don't love me and you've never loved me and you never, and, and, you know, we, we have this terrible reaction to the pain that we go through because we expect there's something in us that when things are going good, we're not overly grateful about it because let's be honest, we just kind of feel like, you know, we're owed it. Like, yeah, things should go good. Yeah, things should be all right. Yeah, um, we shouldn't face pain or, or have heartache or, or uh, go through physical ailments. I mean, just, yeah, I mean, God's good. So that means that, you know, I don't have to deal with fill in the blank. And then when we do, which is just an inevitable part of life, um, 
And you go, well, why is it an inevitable part of life, Pastor Paul? Why can't everything always be good? If God's good, then why can't everything always be good? Because here's the deal, folks. You and I are sinners. And you and I live in a world dominated, dominated by sin. Every part of everything you and I know, touch, experience is under the curse of sin. We brought it on ourselves. And, and the moment you go, well, that's unfair because, you know, if you believe in the story of Adam and Eve, and if you don't believe in the story of Adam and Eve, it doesn't kind of really matter in this sense because um, here's the deal. We do it every day. We, we don't need Adam and Eve to be sinners. We do it every day. We're selfish. We are um, prone to... We're prone to um, hurt, marginalize, discriminate. Um, these are all these are all outgrowths of just simply. And so, it's not just me who does that. It's not just you who does it. It's the person next to you. It's the person who lives down the street. It's the person who lives across the the road. It's the person who lives next town. It's the person who lives in China, Asia. Uh, you know, in Russia, in name wherever, we're all we're all sinners, and we all sin, and so we live in this sin cursed world. And so there's not one of us who can who can escape pain, who can escape suffering, who can escape those moments when it's inevitably going to happen. And so. We go back to the story of Job. Job is a man who loved God, served God, was by God's own account the most righteous man who was alive at the time. Satan says, I can get him to turn on you, God. And God says, no, you can't because I know his heart. You can touch his what anything, but you can't get to his heart. And so literally in one moment, his wealth, his family, his, his, his um, reputation, everything gone. It's all gone. And here's what it says in Job chapter 120. After Job gets, gets report after they literally are waiting in line to tell Job, your kids are dead. Your, your flocks are, your flocks and herds are destroyed. Your barns burned down, right? Everything, everything that's important and everything that causes you wealth and the ability to create wealth, gone. And in that society, in that day, that meant he was cursed by God. And so he was also a pariah by everyone around him. And here's immediately what Job did. Job stood up tore his robe in grief and shaved his head and he fell to the ground and worshiped. He worshiped. Now, what does that word worship there mean? Because it may surprise you that he would worship. But really, here's what that is saying. He recognized, and here's what I want you to catch today. He recognized where to take his pain. We do all kinds of things with pain. We internalize, we complain, we get on the phone and call as many people as we can to try and come around us. And it's not that any of these things are wrong. None of those things are necessarily wrong. But here's what Job made a decision. Job made a decision, I'm going to take my pain to God. Job decided, you know what? Even though it doesn't feel like it right now, I know that my God cares about my pain. I know that God cares about my pain. And no matter what else happens, I'm going to take my pain to God. Here's the deal. We have a tendency to do the same thing with our pain that we do with our everyday lives. And that is... We pull God in when we need him. We, we exhaust every other means of support, of help, of emotional stability. We go to everybody else. We do everything else we can. 
And finally, when there's just no, nothing else, we finally turn to God. Here's a lesson from Job. Job went first to God. Job took his pain and he went to God. Now listen, what's the, <coughs> what's the other side of this? <coughs> Excuse me. What about our frustration? Can we take our frustration to God? Can we take our anger to God? Can we say, God, I, I, this doesn't feel fair. I don't like this. I feel like I feel like everything has been taken from me. I feel I feel alone. I feel desperate. I feel hurt. I feel you know. I I feel pain. You know when my kids were little, and they would get into something, or they would hurt themselves, or they would, or they you know someone hurt them. And they would come, and, and if you remember when your kids are little, you, you grab them in your arms and they just kind of cry on your, your, your shoulder or on your chest and you, you hold them close. Many of us as parents, we miss when our kids were little like that because we were their source of comfort. We were their source of strength. We were the one who provided emotionally and physically and monetarily. We miss, we miss that part of childhood because there's, there's just this beautiful bond between parents and children when you're their source. And we forget too easily that God's our source. That we could take our pain and our cares and our worries and our frustrations and our anger to him. Scripture says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. I want to show you something in the book of Lamentations. Lamentations is written, it's, 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 it's a, a book of literally just a lament, just one long lament. And, and, but it has these moments where it, it reminds us that we've got to take these to God. And Lamentations 2.19 says, get up. Cry out in the night, even as the night begins, pour out your heart like water and prayer to the Lord. Listen, your frustration, your anger, your sense of being wrong, your, your sense of feeling like you were done wrong or, or like God, take it to God. You could take whatever you're facing right now to God. You could take him and you could cast it on him. He's a big boy. He's not going to think less of you. He's not going to love you less. He's not going to turn you away. He's not going to say, ah, I don't have time for you, you know. And listen, I got bigger things to worry about. God cares about the things that you care about. God's listening to the things that you're concerned about. God loves you. So what, what area do you need to take to God? What frustration, what pain, what, what anger, what joy, what excitement? God's listening. God cares. God hears you. So Job tore his rope. He went to God. He just took it to God. So I want to encourage you today, take it to God, whatever it is. As soon as we close this out this morning or even right now, just hit pause and just take it to God. Just say, God, you need to hear this from me. God knows, but boy, he wants to hold you close and remind you that he's got whatever you are carrying and that you can put your burdens on him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray as we start this week that whatever we may be facing, whatever pain, whatever disappointment, whatever hurt, whatever injustice, I pray that we would stop talking to everybody else and bring it to you. Lay it at your feet. Climb up on your lap. Rest secure in your arms. Just tell you our problems casting our cares on you because you care for us. Help us to remember that 
too often we go looking for everybody else for peace. We go looking for everybody else to give us uh, security. And really, you're the only one who can really offer it to us. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for a few minutes of your time. Looking forward to a great week together. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.